So this is part two of the cranial nerves. We'll be discussing the remainder of the uh, 12 nerves. On the last video, we finished on cranial nerve number six, the abducens. This one, we continue on that with uh, the facial nerve, cranial, cranial nerve number seven. We, uh, I mentioned a mnemonic last time that we were using, and we're going to continue on that mnemonic. Uh, you might remember, an, on old Olympus towering tops, a fine Victorian gentleman viewed a hawk. Okay, so that would be for the last six uh, nerves, that would be on the F, facial, vestibular, cochlear, glossopharyngeal, vagus, accessory, and hypoglossal. So let's take a look at these nerves here. I have a view of the base of the cranium of the brain. And uh, on the last video, we finished up with cranial nerve number six, the abducens nerve. Okay, uh, this next six, or yeah, six nerves, I'd like to break those down into two different pairs. I'm looking at this pair right here, cranial nerve uh, number seven and eight, cranial nerves nine and 10, and then cranial nerves right over here, 11 and 12. Okay, so let's take a look at that first base of, uh, of nerves first. So the first one that we're looking at, the most anterior nerve, or the most superior, would be the facial, the vestibular cochlear, okay? And now I'm looking at the second pair of nerves, 9 and 10, okay? And if you could look at this nerve here, okay? This one is the uh, glossopharyngeal. And then just posterior to that glossopharyngeal, cranial nerve number 10, the vagus nerve, okay? And the vagus nerve is pretty easy because that's one of the more extensive nerves in the, uh, of the 12, and you can see it travels quite a way down, okay? So that's cranial nerve number 10. And then 11 and 12, okay? The most posterior aspect here, or cranial nerve here, is the uh, accessory nerve. Here's the... Uh, the spinal process, the spinal aspect of it, and then, and we'll discuss what this loop is right here, the accessory, and then just anterior to that is the final cranial nerve, the hypoglossal. Okay, so we're going to take the next few moments to highlight each of these uh, six nerves and just talk a little bit about uh, what they do in the brain. So starting off with cranial nerve number seven, the facial nerve. Uh, this is a nerve that controls basically our our facial expressions from sad, happy, confused, excited, uh, whatever the case may be. Um, this nerve controls those those expressions, and I do have a video dedicated to these particular muscles. So we won't spend too much time on the muscles, and we'll focus more in on the uh, the actual cranial nerve. So we'll take a closer look here as to where this this nerve has its origin, and as you can see, it has its origin on the lateral aspect of the pons, uh, just kind of on the ridge line of the pons in the medulla oblongata. Uh, and you see a picture there of uh, how it is related to the, uh, the next cranial nerve, the vestibular cochlear. So this is the, the first nerve of our, of our uh, first pair. So it protrudes out of the pons, and then it goes out uh, from the internal acoustic meatus, okay? and then it winds its way out uh, through the uh, stylomastoid foramen. And at this point, uh, let me move this salivary gland here right quick. So you see the facial nerve, it branches off into five main branches. And I do want you to memorize these five branches, uh, starting from the most superior branch and then moving our way down inferiorly. Uh, we have the temporal, okay? And then just below that, we have the zygomatic branch. Okay. And then just inferior to that, the buccal, the mandibular, and then lastly, we have our cervical branch. Okay. There's an ailment called Bell's palsy. You may have heard of it. Uh, this, this condition occurs when the facial nerve uh, when the paralysis occurs on the facial nerve and you have a distortion of the face, a paralysis of facial muscles uh, where you'll have one part of the mouth that sags and the lower eyelid as well. Uh, it makes it difficult to breathe um, and your speech may be slurred and it can dissipate within three to five weeks spontaneously. 
Uh, one of the causes might be from uh, from a viral uh, infection, uh, but it's not 100% understood yet as to uh, as to how this comes about. But in any case, uh, that is your cranial nerve number seven, facial nerve, and then we'll be moving on to your cranial nerve number eight now, the vestibular cochlear. So you can see that its origin is in the same area as the facial nerve, um, and it also goes through the same cranial cavity, the uh, internal acoustic meatus, but it doesn't go down as far as the facial nerve, of course. This nerve uh, goes down into your, uh, into a very special sense organ that deals with hearing and equilibrium. So here we take a closer look as to where exactly this nerve innervates. Uh, you see three main branches here. This first one is the, uh, the facial nerve that we've been dealing with. Okay, and as you can see, it's going to travel down the uh, stylomastoid meatus. Now, the first aspect of the nerve I want to take a look at is the vestibular cochlear uh, aspect of it. This actually branches out into a superior and inferior ganglion. And you can see that it innervates the semicircular canals of the vestibule. Uh, which is the area of the ear that deals with your uh, your balance. This is actually quite a complicated little nerve here because as you might imagine uh, there are various processing uh, centers for this particular sense. Um, you have your cerebellum, your thalamus, the cortex of the brain. So this is a very complex and, and you know you also have your eye movement so there's a lot of coordination and orchestra of, of processes that are involved and maintaining balance, quite complicated. And then you have the other branch here, your cochlear branch, which uh, innervates your, your uh, cochlea, which is the special organ dealing with hearing. Okay, and as you can see here, you have your stapes, uh, your incus, and your malus, your very tiny uh, ear uh, bones, and then your tympanic membrane. Okay, so all those signals go into the cochlea and then get processed through the cochlear nerve and then they mesh together to make your vestibular cochlear nerve, cranial nerve number eight. Cranial nerve number nine. I'd like for you to kind of go back and think of the original image that I was showing you of the uh, last six cranial nerves. This is the second pair of cranial nerves and this is the first of the second. This is uh, cranial nerve number nine, glossopharyngeal, glosso. Uh, meaning uh, this nerve innervates the tongue, glosso, and then the pharynx, pharyngeal, glossopharyngeal, the throat and the tongue, okay? Its cranial passage is the uh, jugular foramen, okay? This nerve has many sensory and motor functions, and we're going to deal with the sensory first uh, with the tongue. This deals with, uh, with taste buds, pressure, pain, regulation of blood pressure and respiration. This one, this nerve also innervates the carotid arteries. Okay, the common carotid. Now, as, as far as our motor functions go, again, we go with the tongue for uh, swallowing, salivation, your pharynx. Okay. Now, as far as the tongue is concerned, this nerve innervates the posterior one-third of the tongue so anytime that you have a loss of, uh, of this particular aspect of the nerve, uh, you can't taste any bitter or sour flavors in the tongue. So again, this is cranial nerve number nine, and it, in, it, its origin is coming from the medulla oblongata. So moving on to the cranial nerve number 10, the vagus nerve. Uh, this nerve has the most extensive distribution of any cranial nerve. It plays major roles in controlling cardiac, pulmonary, digestive, and urinary functions. As you can see, it has its, um, its origins in the lateral aspect of the medulla oblongata, and it travels down uh, the lateral aspect of the spine, okay, and it goes down through the jugular foramen, okay. It goes down the jugular foramen to innervate, like I mentioned before, quite an extensive array of uh, organ systems uh, from the tongue, the palate, the pharynx, larynx, epiglottis, the lungs, liver, spleen, digestive tract, kidneys, ureter, and including the heart, where it plays parasympathetic uh, roles, or uh, I'm sorry, it runs 
parasympathetic fibers down to the heart uh, to, to control the heart rate. So uh, as you can see, the vagus nerve is very extensive uh, in the role that it plays in the body. So for cranial nerve number 11, the accessory nerve, uh, this nerve takes an unusual path, and to get a better view of that path, I'm going to remove this right sternocleidum, <laughs> the right trapezius, so you can get a better view of uh, where this nerve begins. So it arises from the upper portion of the spinal cord, as you can see here. Okay, here we have the accessory nerve highlighted, and uh, the right portion, or the upper portion of the uh, spinal cord. So it ascends alongside the spinal cord through the uh, foramen magnum, which is the largest foramen uh, in the body. Let me go ahead and show that right here. <clears throat> and then here's your, your foramen magnum and the accessory nerve that is arising alongside with it. Okay, so it goes up with the spinal cord, the medulla oblongata, and then it exits through the jugular foramen right here. Okay. So it exits through the jugular foramen and it bundles with the vagus glossopharyngeal nerve uh, to aid in controlling and swallowing, okay, neck movement as it innervates the sternocleidomastoid, okay, and also shoulder movement innervating the trapezius muscles of the shoulder, okay, and that is accessory nerve, cranial nerve number 11. And so here we've finally come to our final uh, pair of nerves, um, or the final nerve of the final pair of nerves, if you will, uh, the hypoglossal cranial nerve number 12. So hypoglossal, hypo meaning below, glossal meaning tongue. Okay, so this nerve uh, originates from the medulla oblongata, as you can see here. Okay, it's the last nerve that we'll be dealing with, and it exits the skull through the hypoglossal uh, canal, okay, which makes sense. Okay, it innervates, and it branches out and innervates uh, the tongue movements, okay, uh, controlling speech, food manipulation, and swallowing, okay. So just to get a better look at the, uh, the two branches of this hypoglossal nerve, I'm going to remove the mandible so we can take a closer look as to what exactly it's uh, doing. So I've removed the mandible and the lower teeth to get a better view um, of our hypoglossal nerve. So as you, as you notice here, it branches off into a superior branch and inferior branch. Uh, let's just first talk about the superior branch. Uh, this branch innervates the tongue to control the intrinsic muscles. Uh, intrinsic basically means uh, for us that these are the muscles that control the actual tongue movement itself, you know, rolling the tongue and, and such. Um, and then we have the, the uh, inferior branch, which uh, controls the extrinsic muscles. I'm going to highlight a couple of these muscles and their movements. Um, here we have the styloglossus. As you can see here, this muscle is attached to the bottom of the tongue and our stylus here, okay, from our temporal bone. I don't know if you remember this from looking at the bones. Okay, and then we also have... Uh, here we have our hyoglossus, which is attached to our, our hyoid bone. And this muscle serves to depress the tongue. And then going back to our styloglossus, this muscle uh, uh, helps in retracting the tongue backwards. Okay. So again, this is our hypoglossal cranial nerve number 12. Okay. As we close up our 12 cranial nerves.